Every church should have a library. Books are expensive and it is not possible to buy every good recommended Christian book that will build our faith. Unfortunately, for some reason or the other, churches do not keep good Christian literature. To bridge this gap, in this video, I am bringing a Christian e-library to you. A collection of different versions of the Bible, commentaries, atlases, books by Christian authors, sorted author-wise and topic-wise. Please feel free to open any book or recommend to your friends. If you have an e-book that you would like to share, you can send it to me and I will include it in the e-library. I have carefully selected the books on the basis of doctrinal correctness. In case you find any book containing doctrinal errors, please let me know and I will remove the book from this collection. I have shared my library of over 150 e-books with you. You will find the Google Drive link in the box below. Here is my drive that I am sharing with you. And here are the three different sections of the e-library. The Bible section, books by author, books by topics. Let's have a look at all the three sections. Now let's go into the Bible section. These are the folders in the Bible section. Apocrypha, Bible Doctrine, Bible Encyclopedia, Bible Maps and Charts, Greek and Hebrew, Study Bible, The Holy Bible. And now let us take a look at some of the books in these folders. Let's go into the Apocrypha folder. Apocryphal books are those books not forming part of the accepted canon of the scripture. They do give us some information not found in the Bible, but keep in mind that these are not considered the inspired word of God. Now let us check out the Bible Doctrine folder. Bible Doctrine is a very important topic. If your doctrines are not correct, you may land up in a bad spiritual mess and you may not even realize it. Systematic Theology by Wayne Grudem is a popular book commissioned by the Associates for Bible Research. Vern Poitras of Westminster writes, Grudem's book deals with the main issues of theology including the doctrine of the scriptures, doctrine of God, the doctrine of salvation. Now let's move on to the next folder, Bible Encyclopedia. Here I have for you, Way of Life Encyclopedia of the Bible and Christianity. This Bible encyclopedia contains 6,000 entries and over 7,000 cross-references. It's a complete dictionary of biblical terminology and also features many other areas of research. Next we go into the Bible Maps and Charts folder. Here I have four books for you. These resources are invaluable to any Bible scholar. The Rose Book of Bible Charts, Maps and Timelines is a precious resource when you want to study the Bible. For example, this is a detailed timeline from the creation of the earth right up to 200 BC. Let us now move on to the folder Learn Greek and Hebrew. These are books on how to learn to read and write Greek and Hebrew, the languages that the Bible was written in. Let us take a peek into the folder Study Bibles. I have a few study Bibles for your benefit. These are very expensive books to buy and a library having these study Bibles is a great boon to Christians. The Halley's Bible Handbook has a concise Bible commentary, important archaeological discoveries, historical data, church history and much much more. Let us move on to the Bible section. I have four Bible versions for you, all in PDF format. The KJV, ESV, NIV and the NLT versions. And now let us take a look at the various books in my collection. I have sorted them author-wise and topic-wise. Here is the folder having different authors. And here are a few books by A.W. Tozer, an American Christian pastor, author, magazine editor and a spiritual mentor. The Pursuit of God is by far Tozer's most famous work from his long pastoral career and it still ought to remain a top most recommended list. Charles Spurgeon was an English Baptist preacher known as the Prince of Preachers. He was an outspoken preacher and his work Ordination and Religious Titles is a must read. C.S. Lewis was one of the intellectual giants of the 20th century and arguably one of the most influential writers of his day. One of the books I enjoyed the most is a book named Screwtape Letters by C.S. Lewis. Screwtape is a demon in the top ranks of Satan's army. He is sending out letters to his nephew Wormwood who is trying to ensure a man's soul is sent to hell. 
Through this thoroughly enjoyable book, the author tackles most of the common Christian paradoxes and dilemmas. Corrie ten Boom was a Dutch Christian watchmaker and later a writer who worked with her father, sister and other family members to help many Jews escape the Nazis from the Holocaust during World War II. The Hiding Place is a wonderful book. It's about hiding, feeding, transporting Jews and underground members hunted by the Gestapo safely out of the country. The next great author J.I. Packer authored hundreds of Christian books and articles over more than half a century, but he's perhaps best known for his 1973 work of Knowing God. Publishers have sold more than 1.5 million copies since the book's release and have translated it into more than a dozen languages. In Knowing God, J.I. Packer sets out to answer who God is as revealed in the Bible and how we are to know him. Packer asserts that ignorance of God is seen as the root weakness in today's church. John Bunyan was an English writer and preacher best remembered as the author of the Christian allegory The Pilgrim's Progress. In addition to The Pilgrim's Progress, Bunyan wrote nearly 60 titles. In the first part of Pilgrim's Progress, Christian receives his calling from the evangelist and leaves his wife and children behind in the city of destruction. He effectively maneuvers his way through the slow of despond, passes under the wicket gate and soon comes to the interpreter's house where he learns to think metaphorically. After studying at the University of Oxford and holding a fellowship for seven years, John Fox resigned and in 1547 moved to London where he became tutor to the grandchildren of the Duke of Norfolk. He was ordained a deacon of the Church of England. Fox worked for the Reformation, writing several tracts. Even if you do not have any book at home, this is one book that you must possess, besides the Bible of course. In 1563, John Fox began writing a book in tribute to Christian martyrs, beginning with Stephen, the first believer who died for the cause of Christ. Fox ended with the martyrs of his own day, those who were killed during the reign of Bloody Mary. Martyrdom is not a thing of the past. In fact, more Christians were affected by persecution, including martyrdom during the 20th century than in all previous centuries combined. Listen to the cries of the martyrs and let their faith, courage and love touch your life. This classic will stir you, challenge you and inspire you to surrender everything to Christ. It will greatly build your faith. Josh McDowell is an evangelical apologist and evangelist. He is the author or co-author of over 150 books. And this is easily the best book that I have had the pleasure of reading. Very powerful arguments laced with very strong reasoning has made this book a huge faith builder for today's generation. I would, without hesitation, declare that this book is a must in every home. Ravi Zacharias, an Indian-born preacher, rose to prominence in a predominantly white evangelical subculture and wrote popular books and lectured widely at colleges to make an intellectual defense of the Christian faith. He recently passed on to be with the Lord. Ravi has many books to his name. One of the books I have selected to write about is a book named Why Suffering, which he co-authored with Vince Vitale. A good book to keep in your house, which can be of great help when someone is going through trauma or pain. And now let us take a look at various books topic-wise. And here is the folder having different topics. Let's take a look at the folder Apologetics. Here is a book by Norman Giesler, Frank Turek and David Limbaugh. I don't have enough faith to be an atheist. A great book to read and it presents persuasive arguments for God. I would recommend this book to every Christian with absolutely no hesitation. Let us move on to books by creationists. There are over 50 books in this folder, but I would like to show you one book by Dr. Stephen Meyer, Darwin's Doubt, The Explosive Origin of Animal Life and the Case for Intelligent Design. This book analyzes the case for intelligent design and argues against the very foundations of Darwin's The Origin of Species. Let us move on to the next folder, Books by Evolutionists. I have books by Christopher Hitchens, Richard Dawkins and Stephen Hawking. But the book that I want to show you is a book that created a storm in the 19th century. This is the book by Charles Darwin, The Origin of the Species. Next, I have a few books on Roman Catholicism. 
The book I will recommend for every genuine seeker in Catholicism is Understanding Roman Catholicism by Rick Jones. A detailed look at the doctrines of the Roman Catholic Church in light of the scriptures, it is a must read for every Roman Catholic. As you can see there are more than 150 e-books here and I don't think I can review all the books. Please take time to browse through.